Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour Finals Day 6 in the game number 1, uh, Magnus Carlsen won um, in quite beautiful attack and then we had the two draws and this is game number 4. So Hikaru Nakamura is in the must win situation um, and he was in that situation already in the game number 4 uh, in the 4th round and, and then Magnus Carlsen played a very interesting variation of the Berlin defense. Uh, so let's see what happened on the board because Hikaru Nakamura uh, is going to play as white again and Magnus Carlsen as black. So try to guess the opening and yes, you are right. After e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, we had knight f6. So uh, Berlin defense and Hikaru won against Magnus Carlsen with the Berlin defense twice. However, he couldn't break um, Berlin defense when Magnus went for the g6. Uh, and this is quite interesting and quite important uh, fact. So after d3, d6, what the commentator said actually that white should go for the for the castle. Uh, and once the castle is done, then g6 isn't that great because because d4 can be played immediately and now how to continue you cannot play something like e takes on d4 it's very very risky because e5 and then you can open uh, you know this file for example d takes on e5 knight e5 and even if a black gonna play queen d5 forking the bishop and the knight then there is still rook e1 uh, and then knight c6 with check bishop e6 and this knight can come to d4 attack the queen and the bishop so there is not even you know possible to castle on the queen side uh, and uh, black king still stays in the center very dangerous uh, position so taking the pawn on on d4 is not really great um, probably bishop d7 but then we're gonna have king's indian defense without light square bishops you look at this position bishop g7 and after c4 we have king's indian defense but without light square bishops uh, and this light square bishop actually is pretty important um, to continue uh, white gonna have very comfortable game so this is why usually you know white played the castle first hikaru went for c3 so he actually said okay i allow magnus to play g6 um, and and magnus of course played that so we have the same position which was played in the fourth game of four, fourth match and uh, Hikaru Nakamura at that time played d4, immediately d4, however the king is still in the center. So uh, what happened in the game, Magnus played bishop g7, so he said okay if you want to go for d5 I'm gonna play a6, everything is fine with my position uh, and Hikaru tried to castle, uh, we had the castle by Magnus and then rook e1, e takes on d4 c takes on d4 and after bishop g4 uh, hikaru took on c6 uh, and then we have knight b to d2 rook e8 queen c2 and then magnus played beautiful c5 c5 sacrificing the pawn however uh, after d takes on c5 he played d5 and asking Hikaru what you're gonna play next because if you for example play something like e takes on d5 then queen d5 my position is is just awesome okay a lot of pressure on this on this knight there is also the some mating ideas here so you have to be you know very very careful uh, also if you take my rook um, then of course I'm gonna take this rook and uh, and you know I control the, the e file uh, the position is completely fine for me so uh, please go for that uh, if you play something like e5 then simply knight d7 uh, you can kick my bishop but i can just simply exchange uh, and then after knight e5 what black gonna have is this protected passed pawn and and it can be also very very nice asset for black so uh, definitely not this way what hikaru did in that game was h3 uh, and after knight f3 he played d takes on e4 uh, and the uh, knight have to go so knight h2 then queen d3 very active gameplay uh, black stands much better here and Hikaru Nakamura couldn't deliver the win and uh, and that was a draw so uh, here Hikaru Nakamura said okay 
development first and then I'm gonna play d4 and and continue the game that's the probably only way so uh, we have castle and, and now both players gonna develop so bishop g7 we have rook e1 we have castle knight b2 d2 rook e8 knight f1 um, and now a6 kicking the bishop bishop a4 and now h6 and now h6 it takes under control g5 which here is very very important first of course the bishop cannot go to g5 you know create some uh some battery here uh, facing h6 but also this knight cannot go to g5 and you know attack the bishop on e6 so it also can indicate that magnus maybe want to come with the bishop to e6 uh, we have knight g3 and now uh, white gonna have the plan you know play h3 taking away the square from the from this bishop uh, and then start to push d4 that's the plan uh, but magnus said okay you are too slow hikaru boom d5 first so magnus was the first who strike in the center we have h3 hikaru say okay i'm i'm just you know follow my plan and now b5 kicking the bishop bishop c2 and now it's possible actually to to develop the pieces this way like bishop b7 and now this knight can retreat to b8 and remaneuver to d7 then this pawn can strike the center and and black gonna have you know quite a lot of space uh, and quite interesting attack um, on the queen side and in the center uh, however magnus has different idea here and he played bishop e6 uh, as the bishop cannot be attacked by the by the knight we have bishop d2 so now hikaru says okay maybe i'm gonna go after your h6 pawn but magnus said okay I, I don't mind queen d7 uh queen d7 actually makes the space for the rook so what magnus want to do is bring two of the rooks to the to the center so that's his plan how to improve the position of the pieces and magnus said okay if the rooks go so uh let's open them the a5 uh, we have rook a to d8 as planned and now a takes on b5 a takes on b5 so now hikaru controls them the a file uh, and now first he played before uh, so he creates this buff tube the, his favorite i think favorite uh, pawn formation and now uh, magnus could play you know many moves he could try to exchange the 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 rooks he could play something like you know king h7 just in case if if hikaru wants to attack on h6 um and so on however uh, he played d4 and this was quite shocking um the grandmaster in studio said hey magnus needs a draw only and this can be very very double-edged so for example hikaru could go for something like c4 and after uh, b takes on c4 uh, b5 and it's very very tricky now c3 is possible uh, however after b takes on c6 queen d6 uh, bishop can retreat to c1 uh, and after exchanging the rooks let's say uh, the position is really complicated white has one extra minor piece however uh, this pawn gonna fall this pawn uh, you know gonna support the attack on the base of this pawn and this is called uh, protected past pawn so black gonna have two protected past pawns uh, after exchanging the d3 pawn um, and it can be you know very very tough for white even with extra piece uh, from the other hand knight b8 also could be played but then uh, knight e5 because this pawn is without the protection that can also be the problem then a knight c4 and uh, all of this you know uh, white has a really beautiful position uh, bishop c4 d takes on c4 this pawn is in the center but without much support so white would be very very happy here so that was possible you know c4 was possible however hikaru has a different plan so he played queen c1 indicates that okay uh I'm gonna take h6 however uh, the plan is different it's inviting Magnus actually to take on c3 um, and after d takes on c3 which Magnus actually played uh, we have bishop c3 and now the idea is to give enough support to push d4 
because otherwise the position is just stuck, nothing going on, uh, and d4 is, is the crucial in this position. So Magnus, what Magnus wants to do uh, from the other hand, he wants to exchange as many pieces as possible and also take under control d4. How to do that? Knight h7. So of course knight g5 trying to exchange this knight, this is one of the ideas, uh, and also this bishop can part participate in, you know, defending d4. And now look at this. The knight helps that, uh, the pawn also helps, the rook and the queen. Five pieces actually defends d4. So d4 for now is not even possible. Hikaru play, play queen b2, so giving extra support for the future d4. Uh, and now it's uh, knight g5 is a bit too early. I mean, it could be played. However, black would have to calculate knight e5, which looks pretty ugly. However, after knight e5 and exchanging the pieces, at the end, we have bishop h3 uh, winning back the pawn and um, the queen is under attack, so maybe queen f4 and after bishop e6, the game can continue. White has, you know, uh, a very nice center. These two pawns can, can be very, very strong, so it can be very risky. Magnus doesn't want to, you know, calculate all of that complications. Queen d6, you know, giving extra protection to e5. And now knight g5 can be played without any problems. So and now we have knight e5 by Hikaru Nakamura and now knight g5 as planned. And now knight g5 isn't the best idea. As you see, this pawn uh, structured, massive pawn structure, you know, f5 in the future and black gonna have beautiful, you know, uh, pawn attack on the on the position of the king. It do just doesn't look good. So not the best idea. Maybe knight h2 could be played. And then, for example, after bishop c8, making some space for the knight, controlling a6 so the rook cannot get there. That would be one idea. Idea, and after let's say f4 knight e6 and then knight g4 and trying you know to concentrate the attack on the on the e5 but then black can just you know block the center knight c to d4 and uh, even f takes on e5 doesn't really work because queen b6 and look at this uh, this knight is supported you know three times and also there are some some nasty uh, nasty discoveries here so the king would have to be moved and uh, and so on however the position is is really really solid so uh white still cannot make any progress here so maybe instead of knight g4 maybe take on e5 immediately but still you know uh bishop e5 just exchange all the pieces and after queen e5 uh you know white still cannot play d4 because it's defended twice and uh, actually white achieved nothing just exchanged the pieces so it's of course in favor of black hikaru had a quite similar idea he played knight d2 so now he can play for example f4 knight can go back to f3 and not only attack the, the pawn on e5 but also support d4 uh, so maybe you know a break with the d4 would be would be even more possible uh, we have bishop c8 now you know defending a6 and making a space for the for the knight uh, and now rook a8 so rook a6 was not possible but rook a8 why not and here is quite interesting moment of the game because Magnus actually could sacrifice on h3 and it's very tricky. Okay, rook is under attack, so rook d8 and now queen d8. And this is pretty interesting because after g takes on h3, knight h3 with check, queen h4. So very nice idea. Rook h1 doesn't really work because queen f2 um, and after king h3 there are moves like, you know, g5. Uh, the, the knight is still under attack, so also can be taken. Uh, but the idea is to play something like g4 and then bring the rook to the attack and, and continue this way. So uh, that was one of the ideas. And also if white plays something like knight f1, that would be maybe a little bit more tricky. So black would have to find a way to attack, maybe h5, maybe g5. Um, but still, the idea is if this knight go to, to g3, um, blocking actually the attack on f2, uh, then still knight f2 is on the table. And if king f, king f2 actually cannot be played. So this is very tricky because king f2, there is queen h2, uh, and now the king cannot go to e3. That would be the checkmate. 
played with the extra attack with this bishop uh, so probably king f3 but then rook e6 the rook gonna join and black gonna win that game so pretty interesting ideas you know behind the attack on the h3 which magnus could play magnus thought for a while but he decided that bishop f8 first so he attacks uh, b4 for you know three times already so uh hikaru defends rook b1 uh, but now instead of taking on h3 there is a there is one little issue here because now the king for example can escape this way because there is no wall there is no rook on e1 Magnus didn't want to calculate all of these complicated lines simply bishop d7 you know play solid exchange the rooks um, Hikaru went for rook a6 avoiding that now pinning the knight uh, however Magnus said I don't like it so uh, rook a8 uh, we have exchange of the rooks and now h4 kicking the knight knight is ready to move so we have knight e6 now f4 is not even possible because black of course controls the the f4 square so we have knight f3 uh, trying to play d4 again and magnus said bishop g7 so i still control d4 so there is no way you're gonna play that uh, hikaru went for bishop b3 so he tries to play on this diagonal uh, and now it's a bit tricky because it looks like okay hanging pawn so why not to take it but the problem is rook d1 and now very nice skewer uh, and the bishop is lost of course it cannot be defended so uh white actually would win the game uh but magnus is too experienced for that so we have knight c to d4 uh, finally you know locking all of the center and asking hikaru what you gonna do now uh, maybe you want to exchange all the pieces or something and Hikaru doesn't have much choice he exchanged some of them so now knight f takes on d4 knight d4 and now bishop d4 bishop d4 so Hikaru wants to keep the knight and after e takes on d4 we have f4 so he tries to attack you know with the pawns in the center we have bishop g4 saying okay now i'm gonna exchange your your knight and hikaru said no you will not we have e5 i attack your queen what you gonna do and now uh if you move the queen for example here you still want to keep an eye on the on the pawn and then of course i can take it as the queen controls d4 um and also the knight so not the problem so uh, magnus play queen e7 attacking the pawn on h4 uh, and now as the knight is under attack hikaru has to decide and he decide to to exchange the pawn so we have knight d4 queen h4 and now rook c1 going after this pawn and it's uh, pretty dangerous because from there uh, this pawn can be attacked is already pinned and it looks like you know pretty dangerous counter attack however magnus played rook d8 and rook d8 actually is a very tricky move so for example rook c7 is not possible because queen e1 rook defends all the first rank this is the problem and after king h2 we have bishop e5 bishop e5 now the bishop cannot be taken because of this fork so uh, that's pretty tricky uh rook f7 also doesn't really work because queen h4 uh kicking the king to the first rank and then bishop d4 with check and now if king f1 then of course we have the checkmate here and uh, this doesn't work so what to play next maybe knight b5 this was probably the best move in the position or one of the best moves in the position uh because for example after queen g3 uh white can try to exchange the queens uh, but black can of course you know um, avoid that uh, so win back the pawn and after let's say bishop c4 just retreat and the game could continue and it's very difficult to find the plan for white that 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 was probably the best move in the position bishop f7 was it looks promising however it doesn't work uh because after king f8 and rook c7 it looks like the attack is very strong however black has very simple solution here and this is the draw threefold repetition uh so no problem for black and magnus carlsen just reminder he needs a draw so hikaru cannot go for that this is why he played queen c3 taking under control e1 
the problem is this is the losing move. So now if you want to beat Hikaru Nakamura, uh, pause the video, uh, spend a bit time. There is only one winning move in this position. Uh, try to find, try to beat Hikaru uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the only winning move is queen g3. And now what is the threat? The threat is queen e3 with the check and, uh, you know, taking the, the knight. So how to prevent that? It's actually, it's, it's actually impossible. And the worst thing is uh, not only the knight cannot be defended. If knight is moved, the problem is that rook d3 is coming uh, with the skewer. So the bishop is lost. So bishop would have to be sacrificed, for example, uh, and then maybe queen c7 with tempo, but the king still can, you know, hide uh, to h7. So queen c2, let's say, and uh, and it's still, you know, queen e3 with check, king h1, now queen f4, just winning a couple of um, of pawns and, and win the game. Of course, the, the rook cannot be taken uh, because queen c1. And then after king h2, then bishop e5, and this bishop's gonna win the game, okay? g3, uh, queen b2, king g1, and let's say uh, bishop f5. This bishop is defended, this bishop is defended. Very solid position. Uh, one extra piece should be enough. This is also a pair of bishops, so uh, it's, it's definitely winning for black. So that's not even possible to move the, the knight. So Hikaru said, okay, I'm gonna lose the piece, so let's do it in style. Queen c7, and now he wants to have the, the counterplay. The point is, of course, rook d4 is not possible, and that's a little trap. Uh, so we have queen f7, king h7, and that would be a checkmate. Uh, so of course, that's not possible. And also, uh, Queen e3, it looks pretty promising, however, it's a very, very tricky one because after king h1, queen d4, it looks like, okay, the position is pretty solid, uh, but keep in mind that we still have this uh, queen f7, king h7, and now rook c7 can join the game, and now you have the checkmate here, how to block it? You cannot block it with the with the rook because this is the checkmate. As you see, there is the bishop on b3, so that's not even possible. Uh, rook d7 isn't that great because the same idea, checkmate. Uh, bishop d7 would be better. Uh, and that would be enough. However, it's very, very risky because after bishop e6, what black would have to play, uh, it's something like, you know, queen e3 or or let's say queen b4 and after rook d7 just you know uh make the piece again threefold repetition and only the way to to actually draw that game uh, but that would be enough for magnus carlsen of course but magnus said hey 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 i have much better move why not to play rook d7 first now i'm attacking your queen i'm also defending f7 all is fine my rook is defended no problem at all uh, queen c8 by Hikaru Nakamura and now king h7. Very calmly, king is completely safe. We have rook a1 by Hikaru uh, and now uh, Magnus said, okay, rook d4 with the attack on the queen. So this is tricky one and now e6 by Hikaru Nakamura. But after rook f4, Hikaru resigned. And he resigned because if he moved the pawn, he gonna lose the queen, of course. And uh, as you see, the, the rook is also under attack. And this is the only hope actually to deliver a checkmate. So this is one move to the checkmate. However, it's too slow. Boom, bishop d4 with check. And there is only one move, actually king h1 and uh, rook f1 it's it's a checkmate or queen h4 is a checkmate so even if the rook is still stays on the first rank there is there is always you know queen h4 and that is a checkmate so after rook f4 hikaru just resign that's an interesting game so i would like to show you what just happening in the semi-finals as you see magnus carlsen uh, equalized again so this is 3-3 and today uh, we're gonna have you know decisive match um, and then we will see who gonna win all magnus carlsen chess tour finals 
pretty exciting stuff and you know i have conspiracy theory that magnus carlsen you know uh, lose on purpose or or maybe don't play on the on the full strength just to spice up the things you know just to make everything uh, very exciting and you know seven days of um, of streaming seven days of advertising uh, why not you know seven days are much better than four days of course hikaru nakamura is one of the best players in the in the uh, especially in the blitz time control uh, in rapid time control as we see he also do really really well and then yeah that's just conspiracy theory, but feel free to share the comment and what do you think about that? And of course, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another games, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.